Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTGO codes, make sure you check out the Potown store, especially over this Black Friday weekend. Up until the 2nd of December, there's a 50% off discount, so definitely go ahead and check them out for all your PTGO code needs. For today's video, we're revisiting Malamar. Now, uh, I, I never like playing Malamar, I'm going to be honest with you guys, but there are people out there and they're all talking. They're talking and they're saying that Mali has a good matchup spread right now. They're saying Ability Zard is fine, they're saying um, Mewtwo is fine, they're saying that Pidgeotto Blacephalon is a new auto win for the deck. This, ma this deck has reasonable control matchups inherently. Um, so on paper, for those theorists out there, those, those theory monas, Malamar's a good deck. Now, as we all know, if you ever play the game, you know Malamar's not a good deck. But today, <laughs> I'm bringing you a new twist, and that's going to be adding in Solgaleo and Lunala GX in here, so that we don't just get hard bodied by Malo and Lana in every deck. We've got a new sort of um, big powerhouse in the list, and we also have a new GX attack in Light of the Protector that can be a big way back into the game for Malamar. I actually think this is a reasonable GX attack. You can see I am playing two copies of Lily's Full Force in here to give us A, more supporters, so we brick less with Mali, which is always great, uh, but B, this insane swing turn of us doing 200 damage for the same attachments as you would for just a Giratina to get powered up in one turn. Um, and also, our entire board cannot be affected by attacks, including damage. Uh, so, all effects, all damage, negated for an entire turn. And Mali oftentimes feels a turn behind, you know? So, giving yourself a free 200 damage, essentially, and then moving into the Cosmic Burn, doing 230 afterwards, insane stuff. So, we're trying out Solgaleo Lunala here, seeing if this is enough of a swing card against the decks that naturally play a bunch of healing tools, you know, the... Um, Green's base decks play a lot of Tag Call and Malolana, ADP plays a lot of um, Malolana. On the ADP subject, by the way, um, this archetype enjoys the fact that the slower ADPs have won out over the End Resolve based ones. I think against End Resolve based ADP, Mali still just scoops. Um, but against slower ADPs that just attach pass into your face, Malamar has a bit of a better chance. I think if you actually use Light of the Protector, you probably win that matchup. So, yeah, this one tag team that we got from Cosmic Eclipse hasn't really um, been given the chance to shine, but it's definitely one of these cards that I wanted to test out a lot with Malamar, and I've finally got around to it. So, I enjoy the options this card brings in more conventional matchups, and I respect that Malamar has the sort of toolbox of one of attackers. Uh, to help out in all sorts of situations. So that's going to be how we're exploring the archetype today. So let's get into it. Starting off with that 4-4 Malamar line, this is what makes the deck tick. You're trying to get as many of this stage 1 into play as possible, essentially, so that we can spam Psychic Recharge, so that we're able to get Psychic Energies back from our discard pile when we soften knockouts, and even in those early turns where you're going to throw Energies into the bin to try and get your attackers on turn 2. For example, Giratina requires 3 Energy for turn 2 to use Shadow Impact. If you get a Psychic Recharge in on that second turn, you can get attacking straight away. That's the whole idea here. So Malamar speeds up the deck and makes sure that we have the next attacker already lined up for us the following turn. Oftentimes you'll know about the Giratina loop where it just distortion doors itself back into play and then you recharge those energies that just got taken off him back onto him and then you just manually attach and you go again. So yeah, this really creates a bit of a loop with the AD, with the uh, Malamar deck and Giratina in particular, but also has that flexibility to power up all these other attackers all in one go. So uh, Psychic Recharge, obviously a fantastic option for us to have and it's the lifeblood of the deck. We then have two copies of Giratina, Distortion Door, still a fantastic ability for getting some chip jam uh, damage in there. It can really help you make your Shadow Impacts be two hit KOs against tag teams, which is sweet. Also just setting up things like Jirachis. We know Jirachis in a bunch of decks right now. So trying to set up damage with Distortion Door as well as Spell Tags can get you free prize cards, which is always good. And um, yeah, it obviously reloads this card, so we need to play two copies and he becomes the main attacker just because he's infinite, essentially. Uh, you also have the Shadow Impact attack for two Psychic and a Colors, so you do 130. It's good enough to knock out a bunch of non-GXs, and it's good enough to threaten two hit KOs on tag teams. You do 260 to Mewtwo if they haven't found their weak guard energy, and Mewtwo basically tries to go for the Welder-Welder combo against you anyway, so it's rare that they actually weave in Guzma Hala on those opening turns, because their win rate is much higher when they actually do get the Welder-Welder SBDO play against you. 
Um, so there are a bunch of Mewtwo's playing weak guard, but a lot of them won't actually go for it against Malamar, which is really weird. Like, naturally it's good against Malamar, but they're usually digging for welder pieces anyway to try and destroy your board. Um, so this weakness actually pays off like a good amount of times. Also, a lot of Mewtwo players only play two copies of weak guard, and they can prize it and miss it and all that good stuff. So, yeah, Shadow Impact can do 260 against them. That means that a Distortion Door at some point in the game, obviously we play Great Catcher, so we can throw them to the bench and then Distortion Door onto them. Um, or Spell Tag Math, that can all chip in. So, yeah, Shadow Impact, decent attack all around. Obviously, it has been neutered quite a bit by uh, Mallow and Lana. That's why we've added in a Solgaleo Lunala. Uh, for that sort of approach. Okay, from there we have all these one-offs. We'll uh, go back to the Solgaleo Lunala, talk about it in a bit more detail. Cosmic Burn is essentially Flare Strike uh, from Reshizard, and we know how good that attack is. It's actually better in this deck, believe it or not, just because we have that sort of setup damage that we can go for. Um, usually, you don't Cosmic Burn out of nowhere. You have to have three Malamars in play, which is a bit of a dream case scenario. Um, usually, you'll Light of the Protector GX first, Get yourself that free turn, or even if you're not high rolling with a Lily's Full Force, you do 200, probably tank, then attach and do 230. That 200, already great numbers, you can just bring up a Dedene GX, for example, and take a free two prizes, and obviously you're a big tanky guy that can sit in the active, which is great. Um, and Cosmic Burn, as I said, with the help of Distortion Door, the help of Spell Tags, you can hopefully finish off tag teams that you've set up with damage. Uh, so that's very cool, and can be a great way to close games, so... Yeah, this really helps out and puts a shift in for those decks that are trying to tank around Malamar. I know previously I did a Malamar list that played Lopuff. Um, I think Lopuff's still good, uh, for sure. And if you want to add in Lopuff to the deck, I'm not going to judge you for it. I think it's still very good against Mewtwo, for example. I think it's still pretty good against uh, Ability Zard. But I think ADP is moving away from a heavy Dedenne line. And they probably won't want to use Keldeo against you anyways. So I think Lopuff is actually quite bad against ADP. So I'm preferring the Sogaleo Lunala, who was an absolute champion against ADP. Um, having that turn of immunity from attacks can be so game-changing against them because they try and beat you in four attacks, basically. Uh, they GX, then they attack through three non-GXs. If you weave in this Light of the Protector, it minuses them a whole turn whilst you're doing 200. So, yeah, this is a fantastic attack to have against ADP in particular um, to really help try and bring the match up close. <laughs> I think it's still pretty bad. All right, uh, from there we have the other tag team, SBDO. Um, I think he's much more niche now, but I think very good against control decks. Anything running Pidgeotto, if it's Pidgeotto Blounds, or if it's Pidgeotto Control, you're gonna destroy them with a bunch of cross division damage. Um, you can also be very effective against the um, Florgus deck as well. Um, really make life difficult for them. Even if you're just doing it for the three energy, you can get rid of a, a Flabebe and a Munchlax, for example, in one in one go all at once. Um, usually against them, you'll probably go for the full 200 and try and take out like double Florgus at the same time and be very awkward for them. So yeah, this guy is an all-star against controlling decks and anything running Pidgeotto. Uh, similar to how Mewtwo's used him, you know, they just try and destroy those sort of setup-based decks and destroy their draw engine all in one go. SBDO obviously still a champion for that. I think a lot of other matchups, he's never as safe anymore. There is so much one hit kill in the format, um, and there's um, great catcher now. So he's not as safe as he used to be, uh, but still puts in a shift against those specific archetypes. Similar for the, the Cephalon, uh, very good against non-GX matchups. Anything Pidgeotto based, Mirror, uh, all sorts of things this Cephalon can put a shift in. Against Florgus Dolls, you can do a thing where you just shadow impact your own stuff to give them prize cards uh, to get yourself into your opponent having three prizes. It stops them using Surge and stuff as well at times. Um, and then you can start spreading those 12 damage counters. You are weak to Dark, so you do get one shot by their Spiritomb. So don't put all your eggs in the Blacephalon basket, but know that he can get you some prizes. Again, they have a lot of low hit point stuff around on their board, so that Blacephalon can be amazing against them. Um... We have the Mew, again, spreading more counters. This deck definitely has big brain elements in terms of where you're placing your damage with Spell Tag and all these other abilities and attacks and whatnot. Uh, Mew does chip in here and there, especially because it's like a quick attacker. Um, you can just do this without any help of Malamars in play at all and just start side powering and putting counters on the board to 
kickstart that sort of game plan. I'm still playing uh, one copy of Mimikyu. I think Copycat is still great against anything for that runs a Ranguru, so I think it still helps out against Pidgeotto Control, uh, which I still respect definitely as an archetype. Um, I think this is, again, sometimes it's just good to have a two energy attacker uh, because it means you need less Malamar in play, um, and that's always helpful for you because sometimes this deck doesn't draw perfectly, uh, as you know. Um, at the same time, this can just steal some attacks that are just better than the average Giratina turn. So I feel like it's worth the space. Uh, we then have one Ditto just to be a fifth in cave in all accounts. And that should round out the Pokemon, unless I forgot to mention Stellowish. But yeah, this is just a consistency card in general. You like having a pivot um, so that you can recharge the stuff on the bench and then just freely move your Jirachi out of the way. Onto the trainers, uh, we're playing two Great Catcher to try and pick things up. Obviously, we're getting cheeky with damage counters all over the place, so you can set up knockouts on a gust. Um, or you can do plays where you hit into something for a lot of damage but not quite knock them out. A few examples are things like heat trans and stuff like that. Uh, regular GXs, basically. If you just hit them with a shallow, in shallow impact, you can then Great Catcher something else out of the way uh, and hit something else. And that means that when they knock out like your Giratina with a spell tag, that spell tag and the distortion door damage can finish off the thing that you hit earlier. Uh, so that can really help you out. Um, yeah, great catch. Just picking up things as well. Um, helps when we have much more high damage potential in the deck as well uh, to really help close games. We have uh, three Acrobike for digging potential. Um, I've taken out Viridian Forest from this deck. Um, it's kind of a big call. I think Viridian Forest is obviously a good card, but so is Chaotic Swell. And Chaotic Swell is in a prevalent deck right now. And I think we really have to respect ADP as one of the top performers and one of the current best decks right now. Um, so I'm playing bikes so you don't just get ruined by Swell. It's been too depressing just running into decks that don't let you play Viridian. Mewtwo already plays Viridian and Hearth. And although Hearth obviously isn't as good as Viridian, you can still get a discarding effect for your psychic energies and stuff like that. So at the moment, I'm just going for guaranteed push potential with Acro Bikes. Uh, but you definitely could consider um, dropping these down I don't think I'd go above two Viridians, that's kind of where I was at previously, um, but for now I'm just going full bike, it's really up to you. There's no stadium that we're too affected by, maybe some random Prism Stars, but they don't really see a lot of play. Um, so if you want to add in a couple of Viridian, I don't hate it, but at the moment we're just going full bikes. Uh, three Switch and two Board to go alongside our Stellar Wish engine. Uh, obviously these are cards you want to recycle against controlling decks uh, with your Copycat if you can. Uh, for treasure for com to get all of our Pokemon out. So obviously, we play a lot of situational one off Pokemon that you love to com back in just to get the Inkay army rolling. And obviously, treasure has discard synergy with the Giratinas and the Psych energies themselves in those only turns. Uh, we play 10 supporters, which is a bit more than conventional Malamar, which I'm happy to say. Um, so we have the four Cynthia, four Lily, still the best uh, turn one draw supporter, and two copies of Lily's full force um, to try and have that huge high roll of Light of the Protector. But at the same time, just over overall just increasing our support account. And the downside of this card is way less than I thought it would be, to be honest. Um, when you're drawing four uh, with Malamar, you play a lot of insta playables. Uh, like all your ball search stuff, your comms can be minusing your hand as you're able to put something back into the deck, then pull out a Pokemon that you can insta play. Uh, obviously, like turn attachments and stuff are pretty insta play. Um, spell tags, all that sort of stuff. A lot of insta plays go into this deck. And at the same time, because you're so non GX based, things just get knocked out in front of you. So you naturally get Stellar Wish anyway to recover from. So, like, if you go down to a two card hand and it's not holding a supporter, you still have Stellar Wish to fall back on, anyways. So. Yeah, the full force is way less downside than I thought it would be, uh, just as a general supporter card if you have nothing better to play. So, yeah, it, it's a welcome addition to the deck in general. Um, two escape board for spell tag. Spell tag, obviously, a great card right now, um, just for increasing your damage output. Um, one recycle energy, just so that we can guarantee attachments turn by turn, as well as eight psychic with the reduction or with the removal of Viridian. I prefer just having a higher uh, energy count to make up for that. So there are some other Pokemon you could be considering into this deck. Obviously Malamar is a toolbox and uh, there is the other Mimikyu uh, that you could certainly be playing. In the list, the Shadow Box if you want to improve your Mewtwo matchup. Personally, I actually think this is a bit of a bait. I think it's not good in the Mewtwo matchup unless you're also playing Shrines. Spry uh, Shrines is more Stadium Spaces, which makes you worse to swell. And it's just like more wasted cards that don't help you get set up. So. You're choosing to clunk out your deck if you put Mimikyu in, which is bad against every matchup that isn't Mewtwo, um, or just like random Silver Allies. Um, so I think it's just A, a situational card, and B, you need to focus your ball search on your Malamars 
almost every game. Uh, so if you're focusing your ball search onto Mimikyu, then your opponent just puts a hood on, you've got into a worse spot than you were previously. So I think Mimikyu is personally a bait. It's also a bench space for you. Uh, so it's like one less Stellowish or like one less flexi spot for more in case and stuff. I, I really do, do think it's actually quite a bad card in Malamar. I think there's way better Shrine decks that can work for it. Even with the amount of flexible damage, I really do think it's a bait in the deck. Uh, one thing that is not a bait, but I just don't have space for right now with the switch towards Sogolo Lunala is the Latios GX. Uh, tag purging is pretty decent against some green space stuff um, and is relatively effective. And Clear Vision GX can deny things like cross division and can deny an ADP getting their alter creation off. So there is certainly some upside to this card. Also it helps out against Absol because it has a natural free retreat so you can escape board and then you get around one Absol, uh, which can be reasonable. So it's a card that's just kind of been cut because of the Solgaleo Lunala. But if I wasn't playing this sort of package, I think the Latios goes straight back in. But yeah, that's really it. I think the only other sort of contentious card is not playing Viridian. Uh, everything else is more or less pretty standard. So we'll get into some games now and hopefully we don't break. <clears throat> I know there are some Malamar fans out there. I know there's a plenty of Mali haters as well. Definitely a Marmite deck. Pretty good hand though. We have double ink. That's the first hurdle. You know, get around the sometimes you miss inks. You also have a supporter in hand naturally. Yeah, pretty good start. I'm going to throw all these down, even though I'm going first. I know I'm always putting those two down. We see a Jirachi. Okay. I'm just going to throw this stuff onto Mew and go for Lily here for six. Hmm. Well, the hand has already become pretty poor. <laughs> we can treasure out a Tina here. Currently, we have no access to supporters for next turn. So we're just going to pass it there. And we'll see what we're up against. The good news is we have a good amount of top decks, to be honest. If we top deck any energy, or if we top deck any supporter, we're in pretty good shape. <clears throat> if they knock out the Mew. If they don't knock out Mew this turn... We can at least just be side powering stuff. Looks like we're up against Mewtwo. As I said, Mewtwo's priority is oftentimes going for a big cross divide. The good news is we got to go first, and we can evolve two of our Malamar straight away to avoid a hugely painful cross divide. We'll see what else we can come up with here. They have a Stellowish on their own end. They're going to grab a Cynthia Caitlyn here. Cynthia Caitlyn isn't Welder, can confirm. <clears throat> and I'm just going to pass. Okay. Well, we draw a Jirachi, which is a very welcome sight. Also nice is that I can get a free Distortion Door in here. Distortion Door math is relevant on the Mewtwo for sure. Um, and it also means that I can... <clears throat> I can commit all three Psy powers to this Jirachi. And then our prizes are basically mapped out for us. We knock out the, the Pokemon on the board currently, and we've won the game. So That's basically the plan. Gonna see the board on our opponent's Jirachi. They're also gonna use a giant hearth, getting rid of their stamp. Try to improve their Stella Wish to this time find a welder. Oh, it looks like they top decked welder. Or got it off the Cynthia Caitlin. One of those. Also see the psych energy come down now. I'm 
Let me see a Stella Wish. Oh, wow, they play custom catchers. That's actually important. A lot of decks have moved towards great catchers. But it looks like our opponent's still sticking with customs, which is going to help them out here. Plays around the first of many spell tags that we're going to throw in their face. They're going to take the first prize here using uh, Flamethrower by the looks of things. Alright, and we have a chance of Stellar Wishing now. Is it going to be Stellar Wish or Stellar Whiff? Well, it's a Lily's Full Force. Which actually looks decent here. Like, it's better than a Lily in this hand. Or it's at least the same as a Lily if I put down the escape board. And it does get us towards another Malamar, which is not what we need. I could get another Jirachi. What can Jirachi help me here? It's just acro bikes, basically. Um, let's think about this. I definitely want to increase my hit points. Um... Putting down this 6, 12, 19. So I can't put down the NK because then he'll have the three targets to knock out all at once. 7, 14, 20 would be the same if I went for a second Stellar Wish. So I think I just got a side power here. I don't mind putting three on the Jirachi again, because Distortion Door is a thing. Um, we will keep the Switch and the uh, the Inke. Our opponent is going to go ahead and use that Hearth. And they're going to go for the Welder here. The next Mewtwo comes down. They're going to put energy on that. It's basically irrelevant. Let's see the Mind Report. And we're going to see the cross divide. Probably just getting rid of both Mallies here. You've got to imagine it's both Mallies. go down to three prize cards. But we're still not that far off track. Lily's a good draw. Saves me. I was going to play Switch anyway, actually. Uh, I guess I don't need to play Switch now. Uh, I still will. Just to get us extra reach for treasures and comms and such. Alright. Bike's fine. Um, two of these gone. I think I want to grab another. I can grab the Ditto Prism now. Just because it plays around the custom catches a bit better. And we'll take our turn to set up Dedene. <clears throat> So 
So in theory, we're still not that far off track. Especially because there's no weak guards currently in play at all. And yeah, they're just going to jump in balloons, so... Do I want to take my extra prize now, is the question. I'm just going to put it all on here. So he's two attacks away. We have this one attack, and then it's all set up for us there. Um, so I definitely need to try and find um, a Mali this turn and get an energy on board. It's a priority for sure. We find the treasure. I just don't have a valid target to um, attach to right now. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we can toss the Blown away. Grab this. I'll take my Jirachi prize now. <clears throat> We're currently holding Great Catcher. So they need to heal their Dedene and also play around spell tag. So they need to they need to custom. Oh, sorry, they need to Malolana and at the same time customs. Also, they can obviously reset stamp us out of Great Catcher. So, this is going to be part one, if they can Malolana this guy. See a Cherish Ball for a Naga. Oh, this does it too. They can uh, Malolana, then Naga to avoid the spell tag. And then do I lose? Yeah, I think we lose on that, right? Oh, he also needs to Weak Guard. <clears throat> That's a welder though, so they can't heal the Dedene. <clears throat> so I think we're over the line. your reset stamp hit either. There's an energy recycle system. See the half. Can they at least stamp us? Stamp would make us have energy. Yep, we just need energy for game, and it's in our hand.
I'm just gonna lava flow. That's fine. Well, it looks our, like our opponent wasn't playing the anti Malamar cards. Didn't see a single weak guard. So we just simply smack. And that's all we needed. So we didn't get to see Sogaleo in this matchup, but this isn't really a matchup where Sogaleo comes in too handy because they naturally try and target your Malamars throughout the entire game. Um, and obviously Sogaleo Lunano comes in more handy when you have Malamars to play with, <laughs> basically. Dragon and Psychic, so we're probably up against a Nag Guz deck. see Psychic and Dark Energy, so it's Nag Guz rather than Tina Chomp. It's cool. They obviously play a bunch of healing on their own end. Our hand is pretty stacked again, actually. Um, I'm going to start with a bike here. Oh my god, the dream! Malamar's broken, yo. Yeah. I don't want to keep both of these comms in my hand. I think I can throw one away. Now, our opponent is definitely capable of stamping us immediately. So, I want to develop my next Jirachi. I should also have had a bit of a better look at our prizes. Oh no, Sogolo Lunala's not here. He's actually super important, or the, the, the pair of them are super important to pull from prizes. The good news is they normally feed us two prizes for free, so we have like a 33%er of just grabbing it out of prizes before we even do anything. But getting a bit of extra damage is definitely important uh, in this matchup. The great catches are relatively poor. Um, so we're going to toss this. I just want to get as stable as a turn one as possible. I mean we can escape board the bench because we have switch in hand anyway. Um, but if he does just like pop off with B strings and kill the active, this is already developed. So we literally just need a Malamar and an energy next turn. So that's a very good turn one for us. What does Malamar Brick even mean? We're showing those Mali skeptics. Wow, he got rid of a Malolana. Maybe that tells us his only supporter is Cynthia Caitlin. <clears throat> There is the Nagguz. I think the, the matchup is relatively not in our favour. They're going to thin all of their attackers out by the looks of things. Let's see a Bill's analysis. It's their supporter of choice. No doubt they're looking for Dusk Stones. <clears throat> no doubt they're looking for Dust Stone. Doesn't look like it's coming. So 
See another tag call. Cynthia Caitlin's coming out. <clears throat> Just a pass. Okay. Energy is very good. Lily is pretty good here. We have Acrobike and two Stellar Wishes to find a Bull Search. Or we can just find the Malamar straight away. Save everyone the trouble. We have all the tags in the world. Still looking for more treasures if possible. Uh, great catch is interesting. Try and get a jump on one of these guys. But I think knocking out a Mischievous hurts their draw engine actually quite a bit. It means they can only blow up one Miss Magius in good conscience. And they are a combo deck at the end of the day. We know three of their cards are not like B-string stamp and stuff like that. So I think still knocking out this single prize Pokemon, even though it doesn't help our prize race, it stops them with their main strategy. So, I think I like it. Let's go for that impact. <clears throat> Putting the damage literally doesn't matter anywhere because the minimum output is 180. The only thing you don't play into is ominous eyes, so don't leave something with one damage get onto left. Okay, they had a surge. That's nice. Now I'm gonna go for that mysterious message. So glow Lunala one time. Oh, the wrong tag team, bro. Grab treasure stamp. See so Cynthia Caitlin getting rid of a great catcher. They're gonna grab that Malolana back, which makes sense. Let's see if we can get any B string action. Autopad gets tails. <clears throat> now we see heads, so they're on their way. A little bit unlucky with their pads so far. See that reset stamp now. Springer, it's an irrelevant card because we're a non GX. That's gonna pass, okay. And toss an Inke here. Nothing I actually need to draw towards, so <clears throat> we'll just swing, hold this stuff. We see a Mallow Lana as their supporter for turn. But that doesn't get them any closer to attacking, you yeah. know. pad now. Alright, so two B-strings alive now, so they can actually attack us. How exciting. I 
So yeah, Violent Appetite from them for a big heal of 60. They're going to choose to Cynthia Caitlyn and not discard any targets. Which might indicate that they're going to Celtic Order here. Because they probably it means that they don't have any discardable cards. So they should probably Celtic Order first. Yeah. Alright. Let's just swing. Still miles away from killing this guy, just because there's Malolana, there's uh, Violent Appetite. There is going to be that Malolana. Tempting, right? He has another Malolana in hand, though. Wait, did he discard Malolana with Malolana? Two hundred becomes seventy. Seven plus six is one thirty. So it does actually work if I go for the Great Catcher here. enough here. So off these three cards, they really need to find B-String, otherwise they're in a lot of trouble. They at least find energy to attach. Retreat here. And now they can use the appetite. <clears throat> All right, so it's gonna be more passes, though. in pretty bad shape, I think. There's a beast energy in a pass. We will swing again. See a Malolana from them. An 
appetite as well. in the deck of that card. It's not going to be Sobele Lunarla, is it? No, it is. <coughs> okay. Okay, he's finally going to attack us. And they're just going to scoop. Alright. They basically didn't find enough B-strings. Order pad wasn't... Uh, going 50-50 wasn't good enough for them. And their initial builds now has just missed um, Dust Stones as well, to be fair. So we were able to build a very robust board before he was able to get a stamp on us. Even, even on turn 1, our board was pretty robust. We filled our board with triple NK, double Jirachi. So, because we high rolled and got to go first, <laughs> we were able to win. You can easily see how a Sogaleo Lunala would help matters, though, because they're going to try and stay out of range with all their um, appetite, munch, 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 and all their Cynthia, Caitlin, Mallow, Lana, Shenans. But yeah, he, I'm pretty sure he should have relied on drawing more cards, though, to try and uh, try and access those B strings. Get to go first again. Mally's broken going first when you start Jirachi. Broken, I tell you. Just go first. Ah, oh, an auto win. As long as we don't brick, it's an auto win. At least still stronger than the draw four off the full force. in hand. <clears throat> the com looks valuable. It was good to me to be another stellar wish. If we can wish towards a treasure, it's insane. bike is fine. Never sad to see it. We don't need full force too much. Copycat is terrible in this matchup though. We're not going to be fireball circusing for much damage. Alright. It gives us two stellar wishes towards a treasure next turn. I'm going to kick things off with a flint. See a pokey here now. It actually fails them. This time they get an elm. Okay, cool. So their strat is on the go. They can still knock us out with blazer if it gets uh, fire energy. Mm, 
never lucky. All right. I'm going to start off with the full force. It's a pretty good acrobatic. It's still treasure or com now. Com is perfect. Ooh, no backup treasure is a bit scary, actually. That guy can go in. We take our Mali. <clears throat> We're going to be taking the first prize of the game, and I'll just keep switch uh, Lily in hand. Because don't forget, we used Lily's full force. You get to take the first prize here. Oh, I actually get treasure, so I think I keep treasure now. Nice. If he is able to take a knockout, I can't response knockout, but what I could do is I could treasure for a Mew and just spell tag and Mew something. <clears throat> Which wouldn't be the worst. Their attachment's going towards a Pidgey, though. Right. He just concedes. Yeah, it's, it's an auto loss. It's, it really is an auto loss. As long as I don't completely break, it's an auto loss for them. We'll get one more game in. So far, we've not used any of our tag teams. We've not used the Cephalon. We've not used... Mimikyu too much. That's kind of the issue with the toolbox, right? The situational cards, inherently, they're going to be like a one in five game kind of card. Giratina's the every game kind of man. Um, everything else can be epic at times and useless in others. That's just the nature of the build. Alright. It's only fair. We've gone first a lot in today's video. The hands again looking in pretty insane though. It's another Jirachi start with an Inke and a Lily. Pretty intense. We'll see what we're up against. And I wish for a calm to kick things off. See a welder. So it's a welder deck. I'm gonna toss a Jirachi. Can this shed some light on the matter? Looks like it's Mew3. Okay. A Mew3 that's had to spend their welder on a subpar target makes me feel pretty comfortable now. They do have weak guard energy. Have Absol, which might slow us down a tad. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna grab Giratina. Okay. I'm gonna wish first. Uh, why wish first? No, no. The only upside of wishing first would be to, like, get another treasure to discard the Giratina proactively so I could get a damage on the Mew Mew 2, which is admittedly pretty good, but... I 
as mentioned, Espidio. Not perfect in this spot, so we'll just grab another Inke. Do I want to treasure for a another Jirachi here? Possibly. My Facebook's open. I should close that. Um, feels weird coming in a Mali, but I think another Jirachi is still good because I need a switch. It's not just a skateboard that's an out. It's a switch. I mean, obviously, I only play three of those, so. Oh, we prized two? Yikes, this Absol is going to get value. Value for sure. Gross. Alright, we'll, we'll pass it there. Insane value. I'm amazed that Mewtwo's had the space to fit in an Absol, but... It's paying dividends now. It's a really, really good card against a lot of the meta, so I respect the addition. Wow, they play Break Zard. I'm going to Cynthia Caitlin away that Break Zard now. So it's another turn without Weldering to the Mewtwo, at least. Also, no sign of the Sogaleo. So it's going to be a slow build from them. Slow build of their board. I'm going to kick things off with Cynthia here. Still a wish. I think I actually like Tag here. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go for a Psy Power turn. I do still think it's a lot of value just to get three on this Jirachi. We finally see a welder onto their Mewtwo. It's just for the one. I see a Cherish now. There's a Sogaleo. See a half. They're just going to get a guaranteed retreat on their Jirachi here. I think because they could use it for Turbo Strike. Yeah, that looks to be the case. I think killing Jirachi is just good here. I think it's just helpful. Oh, that's actually super helpful. That means I can get an extra energy in the discard pile for free. If I want to. Oops. It's gotta go there. Bites Glow. Let's do it. That's a good one. It's also a good one. Com feels good here. I want 
try and get that Sogle Lunala in somehow. Wow, I could do a great catcher play this turn. Kill a Mewtwo. Kill the Mewtwo that's got a rainbow on it. It would mean getting rid of an Inke. Rainbow energy. A real problem against Mali. Do I get rid of the Inke here? I think I just do, right? Or do I get rid of a Com instead? How many Coms have I played? I've only played one Com so far, so I think that's what we get rid of. I don't just want to run out of stuff if he. Because he could SPDO from this one. And with the Absol especially, I don't just want to feed the guy free stuff. Speaking of not feeding him free stuff, I'm going to put the damage on this Jirachi. So he can't just Turbo Strike again. Basically means our opponent can't put down the Dene for the rest of the game. They're going to reset Stamp Us, which is solid. They can toss a Naga. Also going to see a Tag Call. Some more Tag Teams. Alright, they've got the next Weak Guard. Oh, they put down to Dene, so we can basically, after this spell... Oh, he may not uh, be popping spell tag, actually, because of the Naga Snipe potential. But if he has to attack through the Giratina here, he's in pretty bad shape. Got a lot of GXs that they can thin by the looks of things out of their deck. Uh, they're just going to Turbo Strike. Okay, we can do a freebie with the Tina. ourselves an extra bit of hit points which is good so he can go 9 18 20 well 19 so he can take three prizes next turn oh, okay they're just gonna concede I was mapping out where I wanted to put my Tina damage there well no matter it turns out we were able to beat everything just with the good old-fashioned Giratina plays today. Um, we didn't see anything cool or new in action. We used Full Force a couple times just because it was the only supporter in hand, and she performed okay. Um, we didn't really get to see the value of Sogle Lunala, unfortunately, just yet, um, because our plan A was going too well every game, <laughs> which is rare for Malamar, for sure. Um, let me know what you guys think. Should I weave in Viridians? I'm ready to hold up my hands and say yes, there should be spaces committed to those. Um, should I be playing more tech one-offs? I would argue no, because we didn't brick much today, and that's cool. Um, so just the just the five one-offs today, um, in terms of attacking threats. Uh, I think that's enough. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think about Malamar on the general scale of things. Is it going to have a showing at Daytona? <laughs> I still personally think it's not the best deck, but um, hey, 
The Sogolo Lunana Spice would be cool to see in some top players lists because I think it's the only way you beat some matchups like ADP. So I think it could actually like go into the deck realistically. Yeah, I'll hear it all down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in another video tomorrow. Cheers.